First of all, we're coming off some great results in 2023, and also we've laid out a clear strategy as Baker Hughes over the coming years. As you look at 2024, we've given a guidance that is a balanced approach with all of the geopolitical and also uncertainty that's happening around the globe. So we stick to our guidance and we think that we're executing. And as you look at the guidance, we've got considerable growth in 2024 and great performance as well. So what's the biggest question mark, I guess? So if, if you're more conservative than your peers, where is the question mark? Is it going to be the new energy orders? Is it going to be onshore demand? Or is it going to be offshore? Is it domestic or international that has you thinking and questioning the most? You know, you look at what's happening around the world and you see the geopolitics, you see what's happening from the OPEC cuts, you see what's happening from the consolidation in North America. And that leads some uncertainty relative to the activity levels within North America land. Uh, we still see that um, U.S. Uh, North America should be flattish, but U.S. land will likely be negative for the year, given some of the consolidation and also some of the activity. International, again, will be in the high single digits, so we still see that being robust. And I think, again, as we look at giving guidance, we're taking a balanced approach to what's taking place around the world at this moment, and also giving a predictability to our investors on what can be achieved and also confidence in what we can achieve. Lorenzo, I just looking at uh, your business here, and I see that about three quarters of your revenue has comes from outside of the United States. So obviously, you are attuned as much as anyone to the geopolitical risks around the world. What are you telling your investors about, you know, what's happening in Eastern Europe, what's happening in the, in the Middle East, and how that may impact your business? We're telling them that uh, we've taken every caution and also we're managing the situation. We haven't seen any impact and we don't anticipate a big impact, uh, but we do think some of the development plans may be delayed slightly over the long term. No change in what the NOCs and also large customers are laying out from a capital spend, but there may be some, uh, I would say, delays. Again, as we look at the outlook internationally, we're still anticipating high single digit growth and uh, we think that international is a key place for us to be and we look to perform there over the coming years. Lorenzo, what's your take on the demand side? Um, I guess that would focus more on oil and it does also hit on the Red Sea issue, but what's demand going to look like for 2024? I'm getting notes about 2025, but I have no idea what's going to happen <laughs> this year. Well, Alex, it's always difficult to predict uh, some of these elements, just like it is oil price. And uh, you know this space well. I think demand continues to be uh, robust. A lot of it's going to depend on the economic situation as you look at some of the events unfolding also globally. And uh, we anticipate that, uh, again, demand will increase this year and but continue to be strong, especially in the developing world. What are your customers telling you here I know you obviously close uh, you know contact with them and what are they telling you about their spending plans over the next couple of years again it varies uh, you've seen in uh, North America obviously some consolidation so people are going through that consolidation and they'll be looking to adjust some of their spending plans in the short term but again continuing to be robust on the long term as you continue to see the demand be there on the international side, these uh, NOCs have multi-year projects that they're executing. There'll be some variation in the timing of those, but again, the long term continues to be solid. And as you look at our guidance, again, we're anticipating that maybe there's uh, some tempered view on some of the pace of the developments, but the mm -hmm. developments are going to happen. Uh, NOC, Paul, just, you know, National Oil Company. Thank just, you. Just jumping yeah, Paul up with the, the, the oil I'm jargon learning, there. Um, Lorenzo, you mentioned the M&A situation, and I find that so interesting because that was one of my questions to all these CEOs when they announced these big mergers is, are you actually going to be slowing your oil production growth over time? And they're all like, no, 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 no. It's, it, it's going to be really good. It's going to keep growing. What do you think that timeline actually looks like? In the beginning, there's synergies, they get more out of the ground, but then that tapers off. What do you, what do you notice? 
So as you look at the uh, normal evolution of uh, consolidation, we've seen this cycle before. Uh, you are going to continue to see uh, production increases, but you're also going to see synergies between the consolidation and as they go through their integration activities. I think you'll likely see some tempered uh, measures relative to some of their procurement. But again, production, they're going to seize the opportunity to continue to increase production as the demand is there. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm not an expert in this, unlike Alex, but a term I used to hear a lot, and I don't hear it that much anymore, is peak oil. When are we going to be at peak oil? Are we mm. at peak oil? I don't hear that discussion anymore. So when you're talking to investors, how do you talk to them about the long-term kind of demand for oil? You've got to look at it from a standpoint of the energy transition is going to be multi-decades and it's going to require an energy mix that is abundant of providing as clean as possible fuel sources to the public and that means oil is going to have a role to play and we see oil and gas in particular having a strong robust outlook as we go forward and the question on peak oil has been asked many times hmm. there will be a time when peak oil comes I think it's uh, not at this stage, and we continue to focus very much on gas and also LNG. Well, and speaking of, so LNG, Paul, is yep. huge uh, for Baker Hughes. So they help to build the export terminals uh, that you get, and that has been a humongous driver here in the U.S. And just to focus on that for a second, um, they booked about $169 million worth of new energy orders in the quarter, and overall for the year, $750 million. Like, that's growing at a very rapid clip. Lorenzo, somehow restricting LNG exports in the U.S. is becoming something people are talking about. Um, the permit process has gotten a lot slower. What is going on? Alex, it has gotten slower. And again, we're monitoring the situation. And I'm disappointed because um, as you look at the benefits of uh, U.S. LNG, not only for the U.S., but also for the world and also what's been achieved with the geopolitical uncertainty and also providing to Europe. There's been commitments that have been made and we should continue the U.S. LNG exports and also the permitting of these projects. That being said, international projects are continuing to move forward. And we have an expectation that again in 2024, there'll be 65 MTPA uh, FID'd and we're again seeing about 30 to 60 MTPA FID'd in 25 and 26 and by 2030 there'll be a global capacity in place of 800 MTPA so you know we'll monitor the U.S. situation it's disappointing I think it will sort itself out there's been a lot of commitments that have been made to international partners because you know again Lorenzo I, I, I've learned so much just from talking to Alex about the energy business and now that we are, the U.S. is a net energy exporter, um, it just seems like the, the natural gas part of the liquefied natural gas part of it has to grow. I, I, I you know, so I'm, I guess my question is, if I wanted to go down to Corpus Christi and hire you guys to build me a LNG facility, could you do it? Yeah, you have to wait a while. Their backlog's <laughs> really deep, Lorenzo. <laughs> We have a very good backlog and we continue to grow our backlog in uh, LNG. And yes, we can build. We have the most versatile portfolio of solutions around LNG. Small scale, large scale, stick, modular, onshore, offshore, floating. So you're coming to the right place, Baker Hughes, for LNG. Um, and I should point out MTPA, million tons per annum. So it just basically uh, means the capacity, like how much you can actually process and export because you got to cool the natural gas down uh, before you export. Lorenzo, um, I am going to see you next week uh, for the annual meeting in your annual meeting in Florence. The talk will Florence? definitely be Italy. Wait, yeah, I, know, really? I know you what? hate me, right? Not Florence, South Carolina, no. Florence, Italy. They hate oh, me, Lorenzo. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, and the talk is definitely going to be revolving a lot around that LNG story. For investors just looking at the numbers today, the stock down 3%, what's your main message before we get to the broader outlook next week? The main message is we're coming off a terrific 2023 where we posted some record results. Our strategy is very clear. We set out guidance that continues to grow the business, continues to post improvements in our EBITDA margin rates. We're expecting OFSE to be at 20% for 2025. IET to be at 20% by 2026. Mm. We're not changing those expectations and we're taking a balanced approach to 2024 
But when you look at the guidance, it continues to move the company forward and also post very good results.